What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Electric Productions. I'm Jay and I'm thrilled to be bringing you a new twin stick shooter today. We're going to be playing Blazing Beaks. Blazing Beaks is, if anything, maybe a little on the generic side. I think that's the biggest qualm I can levy against it. Uh, one thing of interest with this title is tournament mode. So if you're playing this with another person, take note because there's actually five different modes here and I like some of the ideas on display, especially hunting where you've got one spear once you throw it you can't throw it again until you retrieve it. So that's going to make for some tense back and forth. Skull keepers where the longer you hold onto the skull, uh, you actually damage everybody else who's not holding the skull. This heart mode's neat. If you get hit, your heart goes flying out of you. Uh, one of your hearts does. And the other person can retrieve it or you could retrieve it. So you're going to be a mad dash for health there. One gun, it's a single gun. That's the only gun you guys get to use. And then deathmatch is just your typical typical deathmatch. So if you get the opportunity to play this with another person, the uh, value for this title really goes up quite a bit. But for us today, let's just jump into story mode here. There's a few different ducks on display. Now this actually leads me to my second kind of qualm with this game. Uh, my second issue is that uh, I'm not crazy about some of the abilities that some of the uh, the birds have here. So Loot Master, and, and they don't really explain to you what these things are, but Loot, Loot Master has a really bad weapon. Uh, it, it fires two shots and then it has like a long reload time, which will get you killed pretty quick in this game. Uh, but he's got that loot bag and uh, he's got a key right out of the gate. The bulletproof shield here for the main duck, uh, you got with your four hearts to start with and a better weapon. Uh, Blast slide also has, um, it's, I guess his fire rate is a little bit faster. Um, I think that's the 1.7 times 1.7 for the bullets. And uh, the blast slide, I think when you slide, you can push enemies out of the way. I couldn't even figure that one out completely. Rage reload only works when you're damaged. Throw bombs also only happens when you get damaged, which makes for a bad tactic. I don't want to plan to get hit. Um, so I'm just going to go with our main duck here. Okay, so here we are. We're going to jump on in. This is your typical sort of uh, rogue light twin stick shooter. So if you've played stuff like Nuclear Throne, uh, this is going to be very familiar territory to you. One thing I don't like is the little trap door. Um, it changes locations. Um, and it can be a little disorienting when you first jump in. Alright, so I'm going to explain to you how the, the artifact system works here. It's a little, it's a little different. And you can see there's a lot of environmental hazards that hurt the enemies just as much as you. So 70% chance to break any key on trying to use it. All right, so we're picking that up. So everything you can pick up is negative. I mean, you take a big risk with picking up any of these artifacts, but it is kind of almost mandatory, in, like, if you want to do well. Every time you pick up a heart, you lose three coins. All right, so we really don't want to pick up any hearts here. We don't have a key, so we can't go in there. So let's continue. And... Okay, so there's frogs in this level. Look for little footprints. There they are. There's one. There's a frog right over here. Can I get him? Yep, I got him. Gotta be careful of that acid. We'll continue on our way. Now, we've only got two coins so far. And pretty soon, you're gonna start seeing... Um, Oh, I almost didn't even notice you. There we go. Oh, good. This is this is the stage that will have it. So this little door at the top here that has the lantern that I'm shooting at right now leads to a shop, and that shop is extremely important. We don't. We do whatever we do. We don't want to pick up that heart. They're like just killing themselves over here. All right, acid. Clear up. Let me grab the coin. Be really careful not to. Step on anything I don't want to. And here's where these artifacts come in handy. We're going to go to this dude, and we're going to give him both artifacts, and he is going to toss out some stuff for us. Increased chance to get better weapons in the shop. Well, that's not going to help me too much right now. But this is the other issue that I have. Everything's so freaking expensive. Like, look at that. 8, 13, and 16. We've gotten four coins thus far. And so when you face the first boss, you have your, your basic weapon. And, ah, uh, he's... he really can soak up some damage. Let's take out the Frogo here. Okay. 
Now, once we, uh, excuse me, once you, uh, you flip your, oh, nuts, dag nab it. Now, is this another shop? Oh, it is, and we can actually afford something. Very nice, because we got that card that says chance to drop better blah blah blah. Oh, I'm liking that. That's pretty sweet. And we've got a key, too. What does this do? Reduces reload speed and fire rate by 40%. We unfortunately cannot afford to pick that up right now. And the reason is, is we're very close to the boss stage. And we need to have our, our fire rate up. Let's grab that heart. What is this? Plus two max HP, plus two HP. That is awesome. This is turning into the best run I've ever had. This game could be pretty, uh, pretty stingy on, on having good runs. But this is going pretty good, this one. Just gonna kill him. I'm gonna grab these coins. Okay. And onward and upward. And we're at the boss now. Alright, here we go. This guy, what he does is he will he will throw out his tongue and these little uh, man, this thing does not fire very fast. I don't know that this is a very good boss weapon, actually. It's good, though, for these guys, because it, it runs right through them. It's working okay. All right. That extra health's coming in handy. I've never beaten this guy before, actually. And I might not now, either, if he hits me again. Nice! There we go. That is what I'm talking about. Medal of Honor. I didn't read what it did, like a complete dork. Okay, I'm taking away my slide ability, but that's okay. Okay, here we are. Now we're in the second area. This guy is soaking up some serious damage. Okay, I'm not hurting this ghost. So, moral of the story there, do not hit the, the tombstones. Nab it. I hit another tombstone. Okay, let's head into the shop here. I've got seven coins. I'll give you this. What are you going to give me? One coin when you take damage, plus one coin. Ah, I mean, that's. I'm never a fan of that in games where you have to, like. I guess that's a nice, you know. <laughs> like, you suck, but eh, oh well, here's a coin. <clears throat> No! And that's game. So, you can see, I mean, it's a pretty fun game. It's it's more challenging in some ways. Like, I love Nuclear Throne. I play Nuclear Throne all the time. Um, it's it's one of my go-to favorites. I've got it on multiple systems. I've got it on my Vita. I've got it on my uh, PS4. I've got it on computer. Like, I love Nuclear Throne. And Nuclear Throne's challenging. Like, I die a lot. But in some ways, I feel like this game is actually more challenging in a weird way. Even though I... Maybe because this is more slower pace and every... I don't know. I don't know what the difference is. But for some reason, this game actually feels more challenging to me. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, but there's a lot of twin-stick roguelite, you know, shooters out there. And this definitely falls into that twin-stick roguelite shooter category. So it's got a lot of competition. And I'm concerned that it's not going to get much attention simply because people are just going to look at it and say, like, yeah, well, you know, I've, I've got Nuclear Throne or I've got, you know, Risk of Rain. I know Risk of Rain side-scrolling or whatever, but... Um, 
and I love Risk of Rain, but I, I just don't know that this one's going to pick up the steam that they're hoping for. Plus, I'm not going to lie to you, the whole, the name, like that kind of like punny, um, you know, um, I forgot already what the name it is. It's a very forgettable title too, something about beaks and birds. That doesn't do a whole lot for people. People feel like, okay, so is your game just a gimmick then? Is it just, you know, is this going to just be a foul game? Um, but, uh, you know, it's not. It, this is actually a really fun game. And especially if, you, if you're going to be able to take part in the tournament mode, I think that really adds a lot of longevity to this title. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's in early access. It's like $10. Um, Blazing Beaks, that's, that's the title. Um, but uh, I, I would say that this is worth the cost of admission at $10, but just barely. Um, unless you can do the tournament mode, and then you're paying like five dollars for the story mode and five dollars for the tournament mode, and then it's it's you know very much worth it. If you're just getting it for story mode, like I would be, I would say see if you could hold off for you know like at least a 25% off sale where you're getting it for like seven dollars. I think that's more of the sweet spot for this game if you're just doing story mode. But uh, you know art style is is pleasant. I think it could go with a little bit of a higher res, um, you know a little. A little sharper on the uh, on the different on the characters and on the the background, but that's just personal taste, personal opinion. There, the controls work fine. Uh, they're sharp. They're responsive. I would like to see the guns maybe fire a little bit more in a straight line. It's it's very popular in these kinds of titles. Uh, same thing with. Um, Enter the Gungeon, where it's like your weapon does not fire very straight, and that the, the game is already challenging enough. I want it to be able to shoot exactly where I'm pointing. Uh, but these are more nitpicks. I would say the game is very playable as it is now, and again, it's an early access, so they're going to continue to sharpen and expand this title. There's already been a few updates to it, so that's a good sign. So guys, that's pretty much going to do it for this episode of the Electric Productions. It's always a pleasure to have you guys on the show. I really, really appreciate it. I look forward to seeing all of you on the next episode of the Electric Productions. And until then, a game on, everyone. Bye-bye.